what's going on everybody everybody in the youtube world um i just wanted to make this video um in regards to i had a question on three port verse five port verse seven port um and i guess basically the differences of them and how they correlate to speed or power and so on and so forth um you know, shout out to David R.C., you know, good question. And basically, from the um, from the quick correspondence that we had, you pretty much got the gist of it. And I'm pretty sure you know a little bit more about it. But um, I'm just say that what you said was pretty much accurate um, in, in regards to the lower number of ports, which basically you're standard lowest number is going to be a three port is by all relative means and definitions will have more bottom men a little bit less top end versus your five port versus your seven port and that's pretty much all all of the ones besides your 28 8 that has an eight port engine um but out of just the major branding you know, you have three, five, and seven in the off-road world. Now, in the on-road world, you have as many as nine ports. You know, it's been some where it was 10, 11, or 12 port engines, you know. But um, it seems like things have settled down in the off-road world to three, five, and seven. Now, with that being said, um, the number of ports is a very small factor in the overall power scheme um from my understanding and anybody who watches this video you know if you have a difference of opinion or you feel as though i'm wrong about something you know by all means correct me you know shed some light on it you know whatever bring bring your knowledge to the table um but from my understanding the porting is, the number of ports, I should say, has a bare minimum effect on the overall power. Now, what I got is a three port in the middle, a five port to the left, and a seven port to the right. Don't know why I put them like that. I should have did three, five, seven, but I put three in the middle. Don't, you know, don't. Let, let me go on that one. All right. So from my understanding, it's more so about where the ports are placed vertically on the sleeve. And the reason being is as the piston goes up the sleeve to, you know, um, compress the fuel, or well, let me back up. As the piston comes down to let the exhaust out and to bring more fuel from the suction pressure into the crankcase, up the walls of the cylinder sleeve and into the uh, combustion area, where those ports are placed vertically on the sleeve give you your timing and gives you your duration of how long that port will stay open to either let fuel into the uh to the the combustion chamber or as far as the exhaust port is concerned let the exhaust gases out of the combustion chamber now the higher up on the sleeve, I'm taking it as, I understand it as the more timing you have in your engine. The more timing you have in your engine, the more the power band, and not necessarily the overall power, but more so the power band will shift from bottom to mid to high. Now, another correlation that factors into that is the shape of the uh the ports 
as you can see, the three port is actually modded. Um, shout out to RW Mods. And this this three port is out of a uh, cheap um, Trackstar Trackstar SE SEG 21 race engine. So it's sort of not really comparing apples to apples. I'd rather have um, you know, one brand and different ported um, sleeves from one particular brand. But seeing as though Novorossi, they do have a three port, but I, I don't have one myself. Um, and the only other three ports I have is this SEG um, Protec Samurai and another engine that I'll get to towards the end of the video. But basically, you have your intake, and if I put them side by side, I don't know how this will actually come out on the camera. Hopefully, you can see that. But you see roughly the tops of all of the intakes are roughly, you know, the, um, the same height now. Obviously, this ain't really a scientific controlled uh, <laughs> uh, situation, but they're roughly around the same height. Now, the shapes are different as far as the main intake. If you notice, this one is wider. It comes down a little bit lower than either the other two. This one, once again, is a little bit more open, a little bit more wider than the, than the three port. This is a five, this is a seven, the one in the middle is a three. Now if we turn them to the side, and obviously, you know, on the opposite side, they're all, you know, they'll be the same respectively. But if you turn them to the side, once again, you'll notice that you know, there, let me just put these two like this. I'm trying to get them where they're sort of, sort of flush with, with each other. But if you turn them to the side pretty much, you'll notice once again, the five port has a little bit more opening. It's shaped a little bit different. It's a little bit different as far as in the placement on the sleeve vertically as far as the whole hole is concerned. Then, if I do it the same with the seven, once again, you see the hole is different. And because it has an extra hole, you know, obviously there's more vertical holes within the sleeve, being as though the top hole is almost the top of the top hole is almost the same on both sides but then you have on this on the seven port you have you know the extra hole underneath but then you see the fang on the three port is going down almost to the point where the hole is that starts on the seven port now obviously this has the seven port has boosters then it has the other ports, you know, around the exhaust. Then it has the exhaust boosters. Now, showing that, and what I mean is where those holes are in correlation to also the crank and the timing in the crank. That'll just basically shift your horsepower, your torque, all of those numbers to different placements within the power band. So, and what I want to show you is the three port, you know, just for reference, as far as what I'm speaking about, the three port is actually, the practical range is up from 6,000 to 39,000 RPM. Um, I don't have the, the Protec um, 
opened up and everything. But as you see, this is the instruction manual for the Protex Samurai. And I have the RO3, which is a three port engine. And if you look right here, the practical RPM range is 4,000 to 42,000 RPM. So two three port engines and give or take, you know, two, 3,000 RPM. They, buck, they both run roughly the same amount of RPM. Now, with that being said, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, the majority of all of the nitro engines, 21s, probably even 25s and 28s, and even the point twenty threes that came out, the practical RPM range is going to be somewhere in that, you know, 4,000 to maybe 44,000 um, range. Meaning that, you know, they, they'll idle somewhere around 4,500, 5,000, and the RPM basically falls on his face somewhere around, you know, uh, 40 some thousand RPM before it basically blows itself up. Within that range, you'll have your power. And your power is going to consist of your torque, you know, to produce horsepower. Um, which is a whole nother subject. But basically, that's what we feel when we talk about bottom end, mid range, or high end. Some engines, they're designed through not only how many ports, but more importantly, where the ports are located, the size of the port, and the shape of the port to get that your chunk of power and how you feel the power to be in certain points. Some may run, have, they may come on hard at say, let's, let's just say 12,000 RPM and it'll have a high or steep curve of torque and horsepower. So let's say, um, 19 20,000 rpm to just let's just say 20,000 rpm to give us an 8,000 rpm window and within that 8,000 rpm if your torque if your torque curve and your horsepower curve goes sharply up at 12,000 through 13 14 and then you start to notice it starting to taper off at say 15, 16, you know, and it's starting to come back down, you know, say 17, 18, 19. That's where the chunk of your power is going to be. And anything else after that is just basically your engine being able to rev. Now, that's where I would say your porting, as far as the number of ports, with people saying, you know, the more ports, the higher the RPM. Well, it's not necessarily the higher the RPM. It's just that the engine is being able to carry the horsepower for a longer period of time instead of dropping off on its face at 18, 19,000. It may be able to carry more of a horsepower number up into 20, 21, 22,000, whereas though a lower um, ported engine, say three port or five port, may start to taper off, you know, but they may have hit harder at a at a uh, lesser RPM. But once again, that all comes down to not exactly the number of ports, but where they're located and the duration and the timing of the port in correlation to the crankshaft and the port in the crankshaft. Nine times out of 10, when you get your engine modded, basically, they will have mods to the sleeve, but also mods to the crank. And that crank timing and the sleeve timing is more important than how many ports you have. And as far as power and horsepower is concerned, and to back that up, you know, 
on a, say, like a professional level. We all know that Nova Rossi has, you know, world championships, and they have them with, a, what, 2012 with Robert Battier. He had a four-port engine. Um, yeah, Ty Tessman with OS. OS, basically, as far as I know, only make three-port engines. As far as in the off-road 21 world, all of their engines are three ports. And they can stick with five-port engines. They can stick with seven-port engines. You know, as far as point twenty ones, if you compare apples to apples, you know, point twenty one, and let's just put ports in it, a three-port can be just as fast as a seven-port. And vice versa, a seven-port or a five-port can have just as much torque as a three-port. And let me back that up. I said just as fast. Well, what I mean, they can carry their, their horsepower and their RPM in a three port just as long as a seven port or a five port. They can make them revers and screamers. Or, you know, a seven port can be just as much as a torque monster as a torquey three port. You know, so the number of ports really doesn't matter. Now, another thing about ports is if you look at it, you got, you know, a hole in a three-port engine. You just got a hole, hole. Then you got your exhaust, which is a huge hole. Then you got, you know, the other side, side um, intake port. Well, if you look at that and then... You look at it from the point of view of the uh, let me get this focus. The point of view of the um, piston. The piston needs cylinder wall, which they will call a uh, sleeve coverage. I believe it's called the the piston needs a wall to ride on, or else it'll get hung up in those ports. You know, especially if the porting is not good. But if you look at a three port, you know, in order to get certain characteristics just based off the number of ports, once again, going back into timing and stuff like that, you have to make each hole practically bigger or further up, further down to move your power band around than, say, on a five port or a seven port. But when you look inside a seven port, even though there's more holes, there's still actually those little bridges in between all of the holes. That's what you call your sleeve coverage, I believe. And that actually supports the uh, piston from getting hung up and cock sideways going into, you know, say like a, just a large hole, like that large exhaust hole, you know, to the top, you know, the exhaust hole is a lot smaller in this seven port. And the exhaust hole and this five port, let me flip it over this way, is also huge compared to the seven port. So that has to be taken into consideration when an engine is designed and stuff. And once again, I'm not no engine designer, so I don't want to be talking as if, you know, like I know it all, I design engines or anything like that. But just based on my experience, as far as talking to different people and having the same question, you know, that's what I've learned that the number of holes really doesn't have a great effect on the power band characteristic, nor the horsepower or torque. That is more um, derived from 
the timing of the holes, no matter how many or how less um, holes you have, but just where they're placed vertically within the sleeve and that piston having enough metal so that it doesn't, when it's going up, it doesn't catch the edge of one of the ports and get cocked sideways, start chipping stuff off. All of those are, are different designs that, you know, the three port, five port, seven port, and however many other port, they have to factor in. Um, I was sort of rambling on and almost lost my train of thought and everything. Um, so yeah, so I hope that hope that helps. You know, I, I it's sort of hard to really go in depth with that um, without really having you know like numbers to back it up and so on and so forth. And I don't have a dyno machine or anything like that, so it's sort of hard to go back and forth. I'd rather you know be able to back it up with numbers and data and stuff like that but as far as just having the overall gist of it you know that's what it is the number of ports you know really don't matter to a degree and that degree basically is more so concerned with where the port is placed on the sleeve and how big how small the shape of the port you know like as you can see this one has a small intake with a couple fangs but then it also has a cut right here directly underneath the intake which from my understanding will help you know uh the intake flow to get to the actual intake hole whereas though you see this one has some slight cuts on the side to help it get to those side ports and those two booster ports right there, which are not actually ports per se, but um, what they are, they're just, there's something to help the flow um, of the main ports. They're called booster ports. Um, some, some manufacturers will actually call them a port, but and then like you see right here, you have some ports right underneath the uh, exhaust. You have your two main ports, you know, flanking the exhaust port. So on the seven port, that would be one, two. Then you have three, four, five, six, seven. Then your other boosters. Now, if I was to count every hole as a port, this one right here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one in the middle doesn't go actually go all the way through. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This would be a 13 port engine. You know, so that's why you have to, uh, when say like you're just trying to you try to pick an engine out and you're saying you want a monster bottom end engine, the first mistake basically basically would be thinking that okay I gotta get a three port or a five port to have monster bottom. Or you say I want a high RPM engine. It would be a mistake to say, well I gotta get a seven, eight port. It would be more um of a conscious decision or more of an informed decision to say, okay, all right, even though one engine has only three, one engine has eight, one engine has five, or so on and so forth, where's the power band within those engines? You know, if you want a monster bottom end engine, you will have to find an engine that has, no matter, regardless of the ports, but you will have to find an engine that has power to your lower end of your RPM spectrum. If you want a mid-range engine, regardless of the, how many ports, you have to find an engine that has a power band more to the middle of the uh, RPM range that it runs in, and so on and so forth. High RPM, 
you want an engine that makes power more towards the upper end of its RPM range, so on and so forth. And I'm, this just caught my eye. 16.26 millimeter bore, 16.8 millimeter stroke. Things like that have more um, impact on your overall power. You know, a longer stroke engine actually has enough um, stroke to actually build uh, power, to build torque. So a longer stroke engine, um, relatively speaking, will have more torque than, say, a short stroke engine or a square stroke. But once again, that is saying, okay, you got the same sleeve, same engine, and you just put five ports in one, five ports in, I mean, three ports in the other, make this one long stroke, make this one a short stroke. You know, it, all of these variables and stuff goes into the actual power band and the actual power of a motor. Um, hope that helps. I know that sort of was like jumping from here to here to there, but hopefully, you know, I was able to get it all condensed. And like I said at the beginning, um, pretty much you had it, you had the information spot on, you know, and um, I just wanted to confirm basically what you already knew. Sorry it took so long for me to get to this video and everything and shoot this and stuff, but um, hopefully, you know, this was something that you was looking, uh, I hope this helped answer or confirm or verify what you already knew. Um, now that being said, and this video is super long, like I said, I had a Protec um, Samurai let me see if I can get this out real quick. You know, these are just a couple things to come, um, you know, uh, next summer. And like I said, it's funny that you asked about the different porting and stuff, you know, because basically, you know, I, I wanted to pick up the line in Novorossi's and have, um, you know, your five and seven ports you know, out of the Novorossi, so I got a couple seven ports, you know, this belongs to the Paloma, Purple Head Paloma Limited, this belongs to the five port um, Protec Euro LS5, which is a Novorossi P5 based engine, this right here, like I said, is the SEG three port, this is just something I, I had to kick around and just see, you know, just check the modder out and everything. And he he did really good with this. This engine, even though you can find this engine for $80 at Hobby King or eBay and probably cheaper than that. Um, for what you pay and with a little bit of modding that he did to the sleeve and to the crank. Man, this, it gives me more than, than $80 worth of engine. I can tell you that. Um, so let me move this out of the way. So I'm going with this, um, this summer and everything is right now looking a little shaky as far as being able to get to racetrack and being able to go out and racing and everything. Um, just, you know things going on and stuff just trying to take care you know the home range and stuff just really don't got the time to do too much racing anymore um but this is based off of uh i believe it's the b2101 um not is it the, it's based off the xzb uh uh os engines the um, long stroke three port engines is based off of those ones. So that's that's this. You know, DLC coated crank. You know all of the hype about that. Um, one thing I noticed, and I ain't gonna take it apart, but one thing I noticed, um, I think this one has the O ring head button. 
I can't I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think this one has the o ring head button. But I know this is the long stroke three port. Um, what I'll be comparing that against uh, this summer will be. this little pickup right here ultimate engines m3x now this one is square stroke um so it's a short short stroke small bore um 16.42 uh bore 16.42 stroke um pretty much i think this this is also this one's based off of one of the the engines, I believe, uh, the low head tie Tessman engine. I think that was the OS engine it was based off of. Um, this one doesn't have the uh, DLC coated crank, but it has a different back plate. Different back plate. Um, let's see. Uh, what I like about this is this right here. You know, a heat sink on a fuel nipple. How that's gonna work out? I guess as good as mine. Um, it has the you know the ninety degree ball link. You know, on both of them, the blocks, the blocks look similar to a degree. You know, it's different down here and here as far as outside looks and stuff. Um, but three port, three port, and both of them should run with the. Uh, Five port novas I have, seven port novas that I have, um, and it'll just basically be a more a more function of if I say I was racing, more of a function of what would be better for that track layout. Would it be a layout where is wide open in a sense like that? You know, depending on the driver's driving style, you know, a higher RPM motor, you know, a motor that makes power in a higher RPM would be better. Now, if you get to more of a smaller technical track opposite, a motor that is more of a torque monster, it doesn't matter how many ports it has, but a motor that's more of a torque monster would be more efficient in that in that area. Now, if you're bashing, once again, it still would just depend on what environment you're in. Are you in a wide open field um, where you can just hold it wide open? You don't really got to worry about, you know, it, you know, bumps and all types of stuff in the car, or truck flipping over and everything. Or are you in a, you know, area where, you know, let's just say a construction site where, you know, you got all of the divots in the ground from, um, tractors and stuff where you can't really just hold it open because the ground is so undulating that the wheels not staying on the ground to really put the power to the ground. You know, so all of those come, all of those factors come into play and stuff. But um, I'm gonna check those two out and everything. And um, once again, shout out to David. You know, that was that was a very good question and stuff. You know, and um, hey Corey over there, EKJ. 24,000. I like that question you had too about, you know, next level as far as H scale is non pull start, you know, seal back plate, you know, doing this to the motor and so on and so forth. But in the fifth scale world, something I noticed is um, not only is they going to 
basically essentially every fifth scale has a pull start motor but also I noticed that a lot of fifth scalers are getting ready to run vehicles and then mod them to, mod them to the hill mod them to the bank account run out when um, and there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with it at all but I I had the same question as as far as in relation to eighth scale, if you're going next level on eighth scale, that means getting a, a non ready to run kit, you know, and putting a basically a sealed back plate bump box, you know, going modded motor, so on and so forth. But when you go eighth scale, I know that they have kits, you know, what's it, um, MCD or something like that. They got a kit called like Race Runner, uh, yeah, Race Runner um, R4, something like that, R5. Um, you have your TLR 5Bs, you know, kit. Um, there's a couple other companies out there. Um, uh, there's a company that makes a fifth scale called like a Leopard or something like that. Um, I can't really think of them right off my hand, but I, I was looking into fifth scale about two, three years ago. And when I started looking, it seemed like I could get a ready to run for practically the same price I could get a ready to run or a kit eighth scale. But then when I started looking at the kit versions of fifth scales, like the, the numbers started to go astronomical, you know, I was, like the kit versions I started noticing being like, you know, 1500, 2000, stuff like that, just to get the kit version. But what I noticed is the same principle as in a, in eighth scale, you know, with the kit versions, you get um, higher quality, I would say, uh, metals throughout the kit. Um, the plastics would be different throughout the kit. And so obviously, that correlates to having to spend a little bit more money. But my question is the same as yours. What's next level really in fifth scale? And so for all of the fifth scalers out there that that has the time and has the experience with that, and even people that's just getting into fifth scale, you know, like let me know what your um what's what was your thought process in choosing, say, ready to run and then modding that to next level versus buying a kit fifth scale and then going hog wild, you know, making it the best. You know, what was the, the thought process of, of you going one way or the other? So, um, like I said, shout out to David RC. Man, good question. Shout out to Corey over there, EKJ24000. Um, <laughs> Big shout out to my man Don Foss, man. Hey yo, man. He, he, I don't even know what to say with that, man. <laughs> but keep doing your thing, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. Y'all go check out Don Foss. You know, man. He keeps it all the way 100. Keeps it all the way live, and he just do him. And I like that. I like that. He just do him. I like that, man. Keep doing your thing, Don. You know, y'all check out. Um, uh, a channel R R A R A R, you know, he's doing his thing. Um, Nitro R C Attic, man, like what you're doing over there. Good channel. All these brothers, man, doing good positive things and stuff. You know, just bringing something good to the table. You know, man, to have fun. And that's that's all what this this hobby is about, man. Just having fun. You know, it ain't about who got what. And this, that, and the third, you know, I don't even have half the RCs that, you know, the people I watch, the people subscribe to me, people I'm subscribed to, I don't even have half as many RCs as they do, especially even just eighth scales and stuff. You know, I got a little variety and stuff, you know, but man, it don't really matter what, what it is, how much you have and so on and so forth. It just matter, man, do you have fun? Do you have fun and then... From you having fun, you know, what have you learned? Because at the end of the day, with the amount of time, like I said, I'm, I've been playing with 
nitro eighth scale RC cars since I was 14, you know, and I didn't have not really one person when I was 14 and got that car, which was, there it is, there it is. You see the whole 90s decor back there, whole 91, 92 decor. And that's an Offner Blazer SST. I want y'all to go check that out. That was my first eighth scale nitro kit right there. Came 80% pre-assembled. Um, basically the uh, the chassis, the uh, front and rear clips, the uh, center, that was all put together. You had to do the shocks, build the shocks, put the shocks on, mount the wheels, the tires to the wheels and stuff, um, put an engine in it, um, put the clutch on, all that type stuff and everything, put your electronics in it, and then go off and race. Go off, bash, go off, do whatever you, whatever you do. Um, basically, I was 14. I couldn't afford, what was it, a Kyosho Inferno, no, Kyosho Burns. That's what it was at the at this time. So that tells you the time the time range. Kyosho Burns was burning the competition up on the race scene at this time. It wasn't uh Mugen had had some kits out um at the time, but at that time all of those kits was seven, eight hundred dollars and there wasn't no ready to run at that time. And I was 14. I had to figure out how to put this together. My father ain't helped me. My mother ain't helped me put it together. I had to figure it out, you know. And basically, that's that's what it came down to. And I didn't have YouTube at the time. So that doesn't make me better than nobody. That don't make me worse than nobody. It's just a point of reference to that, you know, I've tried to do this. And I've just tried to learn. And... That's the whole motto, man. No matter when you start, how you start, just learn. Whatever you learn, pass it on to somebody else. That's it. That's the best thing that we can do in this hobby. Just pass your knowledge on to somebody else. Whether it be somebody who's been in, in nitro eighth scale for 100 years or they just got in it yesterday. Whatever you know. If somebody got a question for you, pass your information on. That's it. You know. And um, shout out to Rajay. Shout out to Crucial RC. You know, Crucial, I, I need your help when it comes down to that fifth scale knowledge before I even think about trying to plunge into that. I need your knowledge and stuff because you be doing your thing over there with the fifth scales and you do your thing with the eighth scales. Um, shout out to your, your boy too, RC Newbie. Um, I seen this video the other day, um, you know, with the tools and stuff that he amassed over the time since he got into this good hobby and stuff, you know, shout out to him. Um, let's see, shout out to, uh, it used to be Savage Attic, but I think it's Nitro Attic, um, or maybe this Nitro RC Attic. I'm, man, so many of y'all that, that put out good content. You know, that it's hard for, for all of us to remember everybody's name. Um, good to see you, Nitro Bird, you know. I don't care if it's E-Word or if it's Nitro. I like RC, you know. Um, and matter of fact, I'm going to show you how much I like RC just in general. Um, Y'all hold this thought real quick. So, um... I know Bodigel, uh shout out to you too, John Bodigel. You know, um, I know you do the fishing and everything. You know, so when I ain't making videos with the RC, this is pretty much what I what I be into right there. But that's why I say it don't really matter. Um let's see. Never, never been ran. Bought, put together. It's an e-word. Bought, put together, and been up here in the closet. There you go. Truck, buggy.
bought, put together, never been ran. Techno EB410, bought, put together, never been ran. And Kyosho RB 6.6, I think. That's the only one I think I've ran. I ran this at, uh, what's that, uh, the track in Gaithersburg. Uh, there you go. So, you know, getting that broken, but it's been cold as hell out here, so. And so pretty much, like I say, you know, I just like RC. I just like RC, you know. So, you know, like a scale nitro. Um, you know, I like, I like it all, you know. So, but I just wanted to make this video. This joint is so long now, and I ain't mean to make it this long, but. So I guess we ended off with this right here, you know. This ain't even eighth scale nitro. This is just some fish on the screen. All right, y'all. Holla at you.